future. All right, uh, first and foremost, I want to give all praises to you, how about you, how about Shout out to mom, and we're going to get started with this for a portion. We can exit and start it about this portion is what the Most High is doing. What the Most High is doing is setting up His fame and His ultimate glorification. And He's giving us something to share to our, you know, our descendants after we come out of Egypt. Something that's important, something that validates us in the world, something that validates that we serve the only living God. So it's important. And He's telling Moses, He's giving Moses very specific instructions to do when he goes to Pharaoh. And he's telling them beforehand, listen, I've already hardened Pharaoh's heart. So you need to go in there and do what you need to do because we know he's not going to agree with you and it's only going to lead me to show my power and ultimately the glorification of Israel being he's the people. I mean, we are the people that he has chosen to deal with. So read on. And my signs, which I have done amongst him, uh -huh. that ye may know how that I am the Lord. Verse 3, and Moses and Aaron came in. That's a, we don't need to ignore that part. How ye may know that I am the Lord. We know that's the word Yahweh in the Hebrew here. That ye may know I am Yahweh. All right? If you read in Genesis, I believe it's the 30th chapter, Yahweh visits our forefather in Daikon, Jacob. And he says, there's going to come a time where I'm going to prove that I am your God. I am the God of your people. That's when uh, 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 Yahweh, our forefather, made a monument. And he said, I'm going to see if Yahweh is in fact my power. And Yahweh proves this to the descendants of Jacob in Egypt. That's what a lot of people don't understand. When you read Exodus 6 and 3, and people read by, by that, my name Yahweh I was not known, that doesn't mean the name Yahweh didn't exist prior to that time. That just means he didn't make himself known yet. He didn't prove himself to Israel yet. But he proved himself to Israel by bringing us out of Egypt. You read that clearly in the Torah, right? He didn't just ask Jacob, just believe me. I mean, I would just believe me. He said, I'm going to show you I'm your God. I'm going to show you I'm the only living God. So this is all the, the catalyst that's doing so. And this is him doing so in Egypt and using Pharaoh as an example. Right? So read. Verse 3. And Moses and Aaron came in unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus saith Yahweh of, of the Hebrews, How long wilt thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go that they may serve me. It says, Else, if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring the locusts into thy coast, and they shall cover the face of the earth, that one cannot be able to see the earth, and they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped, which remaineth unto you from the hail, and shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the field. And they shall fill thy house, and the house of thy servants, and the houses of all the Egyptians, which neither thy fathers nor thy father's fathers have seen since the day that they were upon the earth unto this day. And he turned himself and went out from Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's servants said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? How long shall he be a snare? Moses was a trap. All the Egyptians could see it, except for one Egyptian, that's Pharaoh. Why? Because it was simply stated in the beginning of the chapter, the Most High had hardened Pharaoh's heart. So it didn't matter what everybody else in Egypt saw. It didn't matter what type of plagues and, and, and wonders that the Most High worked. He already had hardened Pharaoh's heart and he wasn't going to listen. And all of this, again, is for his ultimate glorification. You know. I'm going to start back from the top of verse 7. And Pharaoh's servant said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the men go, that they may serve Yahweh their power. Knowest thou not yet? That Egypt is destroyed? See, that Egypt was already destroyed. This is not the last plague. There's more plagues coming. Egypt is already destroyed. Kind of like America is now. It's really already destroyed. 
There's just a few more plagues that gotta happen, right? So read. Verse 8. And Moses and Aaron were brought again unto Pharaoh, and he said unto them, Go, serve Yahweh your power, but who are they that shall go? So this is a question. This is a very important part of this portion. He said, which one of y'all Israelites is going to go? Which portion of you Israelites is going to go? Right? Read. Verse 9. And Moses said, we will go with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters. So Moses is saying, we're taking all the Israelites. My kids got to go. My grandparents got to go. Every Israelite has to come. Right? What does Pharaoh say? Read. With our flocks and with our herds will we go, for we must hold a feast unto Yahweh. Verse 10. And he said unto them, let Yahweh be so with you, as I will let you go, and your little ones look to it, for evil is before you. Verse 11, not so. Go now ye that are men, and serve Yahweh. You see that? He said, not so. You can't take your kids, you can't take your wives, just you men go. And this is a cut to brothers, if you got brothers in Israel, that's in that spirit that only the men need to go and worship the Most High. Only the men need to do the work of the Most High. Only the men need to be worried about what concerns the Most High and the Lord's death the men. That's a lie. That's what Pharaoh wanted. Pharaoh said, okay, we'll let the men go do it, but not the women and children. We're going to still be infesting the women and children's minds and polluting them with the Egyptian ways. But the Most High was adamantly against this, and that's what he sent Moses in there with. So that's why we have to understand our women, our children, all the Israelites have to be a part of it. It's not about just men keeping the law, that just commandment. All of us got to be a part of it. And this is a prime example of that. Read. Back at the top of 11. Not so. Go now ye that are men and serve your house. For that you did, you did desire. And they were driven out from, from Pharaoh's presence. It says, and your house said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come up upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, even all that the hail hath left. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt. Hold that right there. That's another key thing. What we see over and over in the Torah, up until latter of the Torah, Moses being such a dedicated servant to Yahweh. Yahweh gave him a simple instruction. Stretch out thy hand, locusts are going to come. What does it say in the next verse? And Moses stretched out his hand, and locusts came. Sometimes just following the simple instructions that Yahweh gave us, and have us work miracles. Simply by doing what? Just stretching out his hand. That's why he said he's going to make Moses a God unto Pharaoh. Because Moses is giving all credit to Yahweh, which is beautiful, is what we're always supposed to do, because we're not doing any of this by our own power. This 10th summit that we're in right now, this ain't by the power of any of the men you see said before you by the power of the most high through Yahweh's right. Period. Right? So Moses is giving that glory to Yahweh and he understands Yahweh is empowering him. But to the simple, to the heathen, they look at this man just uh, waved his hands, waved his staff, and hit them an unseen plague of locusts. So this man is like a god. Right? right? Read. Verse 13. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, and Yahweh brought an east wind upon the land all that day. And all that night, and when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts, and the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt, and rested in all the coasts of Egypt. Very grievous were they, before them there was no such locust as they, neither after them shall be such. So if anybody's seen a, 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 some footage or been a, you know, been a part of a, a, a locust plague coming to a place, it looks insane, right? But this... There's never been one like this. Imagine whatever you ever saw, times that by 10, times that by 100. That's what they had to deal with in Egypt for, for not letting us go. Read. Verse 15. For they covered the face of the whole earth so that the land was darkened. And they did eat every herb of the land and all the fruit of the trees which the hell had left. And there remained no, not any green thing in the trees or in the herbs of the field through all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called to Moses and Aaron in haste, and he said, I have sinned against the Lord your power and against you. Now therefore forgive, I pray thee, my sin only this once, and entreat the Lord your God, that he may take away from me this death only. And he went out from Pharaoh and entreated Yahweh. And Yahweh turned a mighty strong, a mighty strong west wind and took away the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust in all the coast of Egypt. 
Verse 20. And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, so and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, so that he would not let the children of Israel go. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand toward, toward heaven, and there make the darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be left. I mean which is like, which may be felt. You said a darkness which may be felt. You ever been in an eerie, what they call an eerie situation where it's so dark you can feel how dark it is, right? Read on. Verse 22. And Moses stretched forth his hand towards heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. You see that? So you had a pitch blackness come over the geographical locale of Egypt and all the places where the Hamites lived. But where we live, because when you understand what happened in Egypt, we lived separately from the Egyptians. We lived in Goshen. We had our own community, right? So it says that they were total blackout for three days straight, but we had light. You see that? That's how wonderful our power is. He empowered Moses to be able to black the sky out, but we still had light. All right? And that's just going forth to, as, a, as, a, as a sign and example when nobody's going to be able to eat, when it's a famine out here, the servants of the Most High will be able to eat. You see what I'm saying? So go ahead. Verse 24. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye, serve Yahweh. Only let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. And say, look, you can take the kids now, which I gotta leave the cattle behind, right? But that's not what the Most High said. The Most High said, we're taking everything out of Egypt. So we have to follow the instructions. You see later on in the Torah, Moses messes up on following the instructions. Ultimately, that makes him not be able to get into the land. He followed instructions perfectly up to this point, and you saw how the Most High was working with him. So we gotta do the same thing. We gotta follow his instructions. You don't wanna be like Moses, Put in all this work, you don't get to make it into the land. Right, read. Verse 25, and Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings. Yeah, because if I don't bring my cattle, I'm going to sacrifice and worship to my God. Yahweh requires a sacrifice, right? So read. That we may sacrifice unto Yahweh our power. Our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not a hook be left but the behind. For therefore must we take to serve Yahweh our power, and we know not with what we must serve Yahweh until we come thither. Because the laws, as far as the sacrificial aspect, that wasn't instructed to the biblical order at this time. So he said, we gotta take everything, because we're not gonna get these instructions until we go into the wilderness. All of this is the catalyst to the Passover, which we know is right around the corner. But we need to understand, we haven't, we haven't got the instructions. This is Leviticus 10. You don't get the instructions for Passover until, I mean, so like in Exodus 10. You don't get the instructions for Passover until Exodus 12. So we don't know any of the of the rights of the Passover at this point, right? So he said, I don't know what we're going to do. Right? We got to take everything, right? Read. Verse 27. It says, But Yahweh hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. And Pharaoh said unto him, Get, get thee from me, take heed to thyself, see my face no more. For in that day thou seest my face, thou shalt die. So basically, Pharaoh has threatened Moses' life. If I see you again, I'm going to kill you. So let's see what Moses said. Verse 29, and Moses said, Thou hast spoken well, I will see thy face again no more. Uh, he said, yeah, you're right, I'm not going to see you no more, right? Because Moses knows what's coming. Most high I revealed it all to him, right? Keep going into 11, uh, start the verse here. Exodus 11 and 1. It says, and Yahweh said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Speak now in the ears of the people, and let every man borrow of his neighbor, and every woman her neighbor, jewels of silver and jewels of gold. This is one of the most interesting scriptures you're going to see in the Bible. The Most High instructed the children of Israel to steal from the Egyptians. We were told to do this. It said, go and borrow their jewelry. Get what you can out of them. It's just like it's like Israel had a, 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 a 1,000 credit score in Egypt. And we were just able to go in and just get whatever we want with no intentions of uh, paying the full debt. You see what I'm saying? Because the most I told you, get ready to destroy these people. Take everything you want from them, and we're going to leave up out of here, right, Reed? Verse 3, and Yahweh gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. They was favor, meaning these Egyptians 
we going through all this, all this turmoil with them. We sending all these plagues upon them, but for whatever reason, they liked us enough to give us their jewelry, give us their gold, etc., etc. Right, Reed? Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, and then also the, the Egyptians admired Moses because they looked at the brother like a god. Because as the scripture said, we're going to be like a god to the nation. So they looked at him like a god. He's waving his hands and making things. They ain't never seen an Egyptian do that. So they marvel at that. So because of that, these people were just giving us all their goods. And that's how we left out of Egypt with great spoil and riches. Right? Read. In the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. Verse 4. And Moses said, Thus said Yahweh, about midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and the firstborn of beasts. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall, nor shall be like it any more. Now, that's another powerful thing, because it's talking about the firstborn of Egypt dying. In every culture, the firstborn son is important. I don't know, I've never heard of a culture where there's not importance and preeminence put on the firstborn son. I've never heard of it. Right? Could happen, but it's not common in here, right? Now, I don't know how many people in the room have ever seen a woman mourn for her firstborn son. I've seen a woman mourn for her firstborn son. Right? I was in the intensive care unit in the hospital, well, not for myself, but my, my daughter when she was born, and there was a sister in there who was crying the most depressing and cold cry I've ever heard in my life because she gave birth to a boy who didn't make it but a week. She didn't know what happened. There was no explanation. Daddy was nowhere to be found. And she's crying her eyes out. And that's the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life. And the Most High did that to all the Egyptians for what they did to us. So that's why they said this cry was unlike it ever been heard. And it was heard by every Egyptian, right? And this is the reason why Pharaoh thrust us out. Because at that point, y'all gotta get out of here. Not just you guys can leave. Y'all gotta get out of here. Because Egypt ain't going to be able to stand if the most high how will keep playing. Right? So read. Verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that Yahweh do put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Why? Because all these firstborn died. And ours did. Right? So read. Verse 8. And all these thy servant shall come down unto me and bow down themselves unto me, saying, Get thee out, and all the people that follow thee, and after that I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in a great anger. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. So again, he's telling them, even with all this, Pharaoh still ain't going to listen. And the purpose of this is, I'm going to do more wonders in Egypt. Right? What is this a catalyst to? You know, the Red Sea is going to be part of it, etc., etc. Right, read. Verse 10. And Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh. And Yahweh hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go out of his land. Hallelujah, that's my portion. 